Hello everyone. Uh, so this is going to be session number three, and uh, in this session, I'm going to talk about hidden hunger and types of malnutrition. Uh, very important. Uh, we have already discussed about type one and type two nutrient. Uh, I will touch base upon it because uh, primarily our types of malnutrition depends upon uh, what kind of nutrients are lacking in children. So I will again touch base on that. But uh, let's start with the. Uh, Type one uh, types of malnutrition. So uh, basically, you know, we all know there is hunger, okay? But there is a difference between actual hunger and hidden hunger, okay? Uh, hunger means like you don't have food to eat. So when you say that you know child is hungry, means there is basically there is no food to eat to the child. Uh, in India, we don't see hidden hunger as much, okay? Because through PDS system, you know, uh, children are getting some food, of course. And they're getting rice, depending upon which state they are. They get DHR, take home ration, you know, they get uh, midday meals. So they do get uh, food. It's not that uh, they go really hungry. Very few, I would say literally very few percent of children have really no no uh, food. But, you know, generally in my, my uh, experience in working in slums of Mumbai, uh, I hardly saw any child uh, going hungry. Okay. Uh, so... Uh, in that hunger, when a child is hungry, obviously child is not getting enough calories. But main thing is child is not getting a lot of nutrients also, you know. Uh, so absence of calorie is just child is not getting food. Uh, that That's what is called hunger. And it occurs mainly in a situation like famine and food insecurity, you know. And generally in a world, there are about 1 billion hungry children. Okay, so we do have a, you know, issue of poverty, of course, in war stricken areas and, you know, uh, food insecure areas or during famine time or any emergencies. Uh, what is hidden hunger? So if you look at, uh, if you ask any mother, you know, in slums or even uh, rural areas or tribal areas or even, you know, regular day-to-day uh, -day, uh, middle class family, mostly their diet is roti, sabji, some, some sabji dal and rice very monotonous food you know so they have rice in the morning so they have either poha or they'll have wheat so upma or idli or, or any of those so grain grain based diet in the morning afternoon it's mainly roti sabji or roti you know uh, and evening they have like depending upon states generally khichdi or you know some uh, maybe some vegetable so very monotonous diet that uh, we Indians eat, you know, by and large, I'm talking about on a day to day basis. Okay, they might be sometime that you may have more dishes, you know, but by and large, routinely, we eat a very monotonous diet, you know, and that has changed uh, in past uh, few, few years. And uh, when you eat such monotonous diet, okay, then you won't get uh, many of these nutrients which are required for child to grow. Okay, so <clears throat> that is called hidden hunger. I mean, child's stomach is getting filled with this food, you know, because he's eating all this food. But what what is required to grow that child, you know, that is not going in his stomach, okay, or that's not going in his body, and that's called hidden hunger. Okay, so we'll focus on hidden hunger and why it occurs. So obviously, now uh, as you've already gone through type one and type two nutrient, you know, from uh, from our tutorial and also my session. So here, let's apply it in the field like you know uh, apply it and let's figure out like what is hidden hunger, hunger and then discuss in a bit more detail about some type 2 nutrient one type 2 nutrient we already discussed is uh, protein you know but here i'm going to discuss many more like uh, other mi micronutrients which are probably lacking in a diet okay so here if you look at type 1 uh, micronutrient deficiency okay here the child normal child uh, who does not have type 2 nutrient deficiency in the diet and uh, if suppose this child say develop type 1 deficiency so for example say iron okay so look at the growth of this child the growth is absolutely normal but here in this child because uh, even here the growth is normal type 1 initially growth is normal okay so the growth does not get affected same height right uh, even the arm circumference looks the same so you know muscle mass is still the same but what happens you see the symptoms of type 1 deficiency so here because child is iron deficient you seeing a uh, child is probably pale okay now look at the type 2 deficiency now type 2 deficiency uh, when child has enough type 2 nutrient uh, uh, type 2 nutrient rich food their height and weight looks good 
okay but when you have child who is deficient in type 2 nutrients say for a long period of time uh, you see stunting so here see you can see the growth has stunted okay when the type 2 nutrients are deficient for say short period of time you know say child has diarrhea child did not eat anything or say over period of uh, you know two three or maybe four six weeks child did not get uh, protein in the diet or some important nutrient you know type like which which is required for growth you will see that you know child initially will have wasting which that means the muscle mass has uh, you know uh, kind of melted and then uh, eventually the height will suffer okay so that's your that's a difference between your type 1 and type 2 uh, deficiency and what you will see uh, mainly the growth so most important is the growth so growth failure is your type 2 nutrient deficiency specific signs and symptoms of some metabolic uh, disease metabolic condition like for example say or with say micro biochemical reaction so that's your type 1 so an iron deficiency you will see anemia okay in calcium and vitamin d deficiency you will see rickets so very specific very specific you will know where exactly which organs are involved if it's vitamin a deficiency you will notice the child has you know uh, night blindness or child has you know xerosis the dry, uh, dryness of uh, conjunctiva you know or child has uh, Im immune problem you know they have a more uh, they don't have good resistance to infection uh, so so those are basically you know those are very specific uh, kind of uh, signs and symptoms that you see with type 1 growth is not affected initially growth may affect it maybe late in the stage okay so if the growth is affected is basically a type 2 nutrient all right so here i've mentioned already about what are type 1 functional nutrients and type 2 those are growth nutrients okay uh, mainly type 1 nutrients i again mentioned iron iodine copper calcium selenium all your vitamins right your fat soluble vitamins your uh, b complex you know uh, your uh, water soluble vitamins then your type 2 nutrients are basically you know your essential amino acids your essential fatty acids your minerals you know uh, potassium magnesium phosphorus sulfur uh, zinc sodium chloride those are your type 2 nutrients okay and this already I have discussed, so I may not go too much in detail. Remember that type 2 is growth failure. Type 1 is the, initially there is no growth failure. Okay. In type 2, when it gets very severe, child's appetite gets affected. Okay. So those children are basically, uh, they are called complicated acute, uh, sa no, severely acute malnutrition child. Because when, when malnutrition becomes very severe, when the wasting becomes very severe, they do, they do lose appetite okay in type 1 by and large there is not uh, we don't see much uh, loss of appetite in these children okay uh, again this is uh, same thing again you know i don't want to go too much in detail because we have already discussed about it uh, sign and symptoms of type 2 deficiency what are the three things that we check for growth we check weight we check length and height or we check new arc mid upper arm circumference so if any of these are affected that means it's type 2 nutrient so please in your program do focus on type 2 nutrient uh, food rich food mainly complementary food and your pregnant mother's diet lactating mother's diet tell mother to start giving uh, type 2 nutrient dense food in children's diet they will grow beautifully okay and uh, in my uh, pro protein i've already mentioned which are protein rich food is basically your eggs you know your child is non rich start with the meat start with fish you know uh, start with bone broth uh, you can start those as first foods a lot of countries in europe are recommending those uh, you know non rich diet to begin with egg is the best food to start actually but if children are vegetarian then you can start uh, basically uh, dal more of, more than dals i would recommend beans to so sprout it you know uh, dry it make powders i'm going to show a recipe of those powder recipe you know those beans also uh, you can also start with dahi uh, also start you can give paneer uh, don't give milk because mo mother's milk is good enough so you don't give milk otherwise the mothers will stop giving their own milk right but then also think of uh, adding some seed powder some nut powder peanut powder and those are protein rich uh, you know recipes but also think of um, you know other nutrient which today i'm going to discuss is magnesium potassium zinc sulfur those are all type 2 nutrients and those are basically hidden hunger so if child is getting food but if child does not have uh, you know food which is rich in magnesium or potassium or zinc you know those children will have 
you know type 2 deficiency okay they will not grow well okay so and some of them are uh, kind of rate limiting uh, nutrient means even if you give a lot of protein but if if that protein source doesn't have say enough zinc or enough magnesium or any of those you know children will not grow okay so th that that's called your hidden hunger okay now these are type uh, types of malnutrition so basically when you say child is malnourished or even if we say adult is malnourished malnourished means obesity means big over or under okay in india now we are saying both we are saying undernutrition also we are seeing seeing all these adults are big huge if you look at the tummy if you do, if, you, if you do your waist circumference is much bigger okay uh, in some states it's like 80 to 90 percent women have waist to hip ratio much higher okay higher than normal all right so that means we are struggling with both our children are not growing okay they are undernourished they are uh, stunted they are underweight and our uh, older people are becoming big so that means something is wrong in food right I mean, if you give, it, if you're getting uh, the right kind of nutrition, why would you become big, or why would child become undernourished, right? So think about it. Uh, second thing is our children are becoming big too. So in urban areas and some of the rural areas, you know, uh, some of the children are very thin, some of the children are very fat, big. Okay. So think about it. Why that is happening? Okay. Now obesity again. I will discuss it later in in uh, you know in other you know, sessions. But uh, I will not discuss obesity right now. Today I'm going to talk uh, talk uh, exclusively about uh, undernutrition. Okay. So type two nutrient, uh, as I mentioned, they are underweight, they are stunting, and they are acute wasting. Acute wasting means suddenly become thin. Okay. So the height is not suffered, but suddenly they have become thin because of diarrhea or some type two nutrient deficiency over a short period of time. Chronic stunting, stunting means height. So if, uh, if you look at height for age or length for age, that is also a type of malnutrition, type of undernutrition. Okay, short children, that means they are stunted. They are undernourished for a long period of time. It's called chronic, chronic means for a long period of time. Okay, acute means suddenly. Okay, that's a term, medical term, acute. Uh, and uh, third is underweight. So if you weigh the child, and say the average weight of a child for that age is say 10 kg. The child is only 7 kg. Your child is only say 6 kg. That means the child is uh, underweight for that age, right? And that uh, basically that's also type of uh, undernutrition. And that's your type 2 nutrients because this is all growth, right? Your weight, your height, your, uh, you know, wasting, your mid upper arm circumference, those are all growth, okay? So when you have type 2 nutrients, you will see growth failure. And to look at growth failure, whether it is in the short duration time or a long duration time, you look at whether it is acute malnutrition or whether it is the uh, chronic malnutrition. Okay. And then you have type 1 nutrient deficiency. So remember type 1, what uh, nutrients I mentioned? I mentioned about iron. I mentioned about calcium. I mentioned about iodine, vitamin A, vitamin C, vitamin B. Those are all basically type 1 nutrients deficiency and in that as i as i said you will not see much of a uh, nutrient deficient with the growth failure but what you will see is you will see symptoms okay now let's come back to your type 2 nutrient deficiency so in type 2 nutrient deficiency suppose you have an underweight child then i'm going to come back again and explain to you those growth charts but just just for this particular session remember that any of this growth failure either they are severe means very severe means really bad or moderate means moderate okay so each growth failure are divided into moderate for example underweight moderate underweight severe underweight stunting moderate stunting severe stunting okay and wasting moderate uh, uh, malnutrition acute malnutrition severe acute malnutrition so when we talk about sam ma'am that's your, uh, you know, undernutrition or wasting uh, in a short duration, okay? And that's your uh, acute malnutrition, okay? Uh, now, how they are defined, basically what they do, they look at your growth chart. They use the Z-score WHO growth chart, so standard deviation, okay? So, that I will explain in my last session. I will explain those growth charts. So, then I will come back again into that are what are which children are sam which children are ma'am how will you know whether they're sam ma'am okay so we'll go in detail in that uh, i don't want to go too much in detail in this lecture 
and SAM is divided into uh, basically uh, you know non edematous but sometime you know the severely malnourished children have a lot of swelling in the body so when you basically when you when you press their uh, you know feet when you press their you know uh, legs or hands they have lot of edema okay it's uh, they have pitting edema so those children are basically uh, we call it edema edema is acute malnutrition when you have some children they don't have edema they look very thin okay there is no edema so those are non edematous acute malnutrition okay and sometimes you find children who have say uh, both edematous as well as non edematous uh, malnutrition okay they have mixed uh, malnutrition so those are basically mixed mixed sand okay all right so again here i again i just talked about this acute malnutrition moderate acute malnutrition and sand severe acute malnutrition severe acute malnutrition depending upon child has edema or does not have edema it is divided into three types non edematous sam edematous edema means swelling and mixed sam okay all right here what we have done we have just shown uh, and i'll go again detail in my last session so sam basically is basically you take a you know growth chart which is who and you look at the z score not the percentile growth chart although i love percentile growth chart for individual monitoring but to look at if the child is underweight or you know or uh, uh, stunted or for sam we look at z score so in the z score basically your weight for height is less than minus the standard deviation okay uh, for sam muak mid upper arm circumference is less than 11.5 cm okay for 6 to 59 months of age uh, and for uh, if child has any present of uh, bilateral pitting edema there is no other uh, you know cause of that pitting edema basically it is because of severe acute malnutrition okay this children may not be having uh, they may their weight might be okay because there's a lot of fluid uh, collection okay and in mam what you what you have is basically when you look at the standard deviation growth chart this children fall between minus 2 standard deviation and minus the uh, between minus 2 and minus 3 standard deviation okay and mu arc is between more than 11.5 to less than 12.5 cm okay so that so here uh, i'm going to discuss about uh, type 2 so again in last uh, presentation in last session i uh, showed you uh, you know what happens when you have type 2 nutrient deficiency you know obviously uh, because uh, type 2 is not stored in the body it's part of your tissue muscle tissue your organ you know those are made up of your ty- you know type 2 nutrients so when you don't have type 2 in your food then uh, because it is part of so many metabolic functions you know so many enzymes so it has to come from somewhere otherwise you know a uh, child would die right away so uh, here you know your nutrient type of nutrients are coming from muscle mass okay so that's why muscles are melting okay so obviously child this child would be underweight uh, they would have muak which is much uh, you know smaller than 11.5 uh and also if it continues for a long time if a child survives then it would child would have growth failure in a sense child will have you know less height or less length okay so that's the important aspect when it is go- when it goes on for a long period of time as i mentioned they will become short okay so this is all this are about the uh, same age children and look at the height difference similarly you know this is a picture from guatemala and for you know 9 years old supposed to be here but they all are short means obviously they haven't got type 2 nutrient for a long time okay uh, so again uh, what is acute malnutrition short term nutrition problem uh, primarily type 2 micronutrient deficiency okay uh, it could be because of lack of food sudden lack of food uh, in rainy season or in uh, any you know a famine or any of those sudden weight loss signs yeah you thin you know uh severely wasted or edematous we don't call it uh, marasmus or forshaker i've just kept the name so that uh, you know people who have learned this marasmus or forshaker they would they would be able to relate to it uh, but what we were taught is that you know uh, marasmus is mainly uh, you know uh, edematous uh, sam uh, and it was marasmus what we were told was a calorie deficiency so children were thin uh, but we don't call that anymore we don't call uh, marasmus uh, as uh, you know uh, or kwashiorkor in kwashiorkor what we were told was a protein deficiency 
Now, child has a lower uh, weight than expected for that height. So, in acute malnutrition, the weight uh, kind of decreases remarkably. Okay. So, the as per height, child needs to have certain amount of weight. But because a uh, child has lost that weight, you know, child is wasted. Okay. So, that's called wasting. Uh, chronic malnutrition is long duration of malnutrition. You know, failure to receive adequate nutrition for a long period of time. Okay. Uh, they may have diarrhea on and off, on and off, they get better, but they don't get put on that weight, whatever they have lost, and slowly, slowly their, their height suffer. Okay, and they have growth failure, and they are called stunting. Now, here is an example. So, if you look at this child, this child is, say, normal, about 11 month old babies. Okay, this child, you can look at it, look at their, he looks thinner. So, if you look at their muscle mass, see how thin it is. You can see his rib cage also. So, this child is wasted wasting acute malnutrition okay height is height is a little bit low but it's not that bad okay now look at this child this child you can see the muscle mass is good it looks okay but the height is good. so this is called this child is called chronic malnutrition okay and this child is basically uh, acute malnutrition so this is acute malnutrition this is chronic malnutrition okay similarly same thing you know same child uh, this is the normal child this is your wasted child means you know look at the midarm circumference much smaller right your muscle is gone okay and this child now has now lost uh, height because this child probably was like this on and off on and off not so bad you know but eventually his uh, height is suffered now if this child chronically stunted child develops some say diarrhea or pneumonia or stop eating and if this child gets uh, acutely malnourished like this where he loses a lot of muscle mass that child is at very high risk of developing uh, any severe condition in which uh, we can lose this child, you know. So, mortality is very high in a child who has stunting as well as wasting, okay. So, this is, uh, this is of course, the uh, example of, you know, a type 2 deficient rats. So, babe, uh, you know, rats which are type 2 nutrient deficient are much smaller than the rats which are which are normal okay so sim you kind you see similar kind of results even in plants so in plants where you kind of put a lot of these nutrients you know phosphorus and uh, all those minerals you know then you will see much better growth in those plants uh, while plants which does not have good amount of fertilizers they won't grow as big or tall with this i'm going to end part one of the session uh, we discussed about uh, types of malnutrition and hidden hunger. Uh, most of us have one or the other deficiency of uh, vitamins, minerals or any of those nutrients I discussed. Uh, so that's why we have created tutorials on recipes so that you know if you have any of those symptoms, you know, do think of, uh, you know, one of those nutrient deficiency and then you can learn to cook and, you know, add those uh, food, natural food, which can give you all those, uh, you know, nutrients which are required for you to maintain your health and also to maintain your uh, you know immunity resistant power you know to prevent you from chronic conditions uh, so i do uh, kind of uh, you know i do request you all to watch those tutorials thank you